Hey guys, I've been doing some more research into this Revelation 12 thing, and um, I investigated in Stellarium the years 70 AD until 3000. I picked this year because this was the year that Revelation was actually written. They say it was sometime between 70 AD and 95 AD, so I just went ahead and, and picked the earliest date. Um, and out of all of the possible fulfillments, there were only three that I thought could fulfill because they fell within the time frame between 1500 AD and 2500 AD, and I'll show you what I mean by that. It has to be at the end of the 6,000 years. Um, however, 2012 was the most perfect alignment out of those three. So um, let me just go ahead and show you. And for those of you that don't know and you're just watching this for the first time, the reason Revelation 12 is so important is because it gives us an exact date using the constellations and the planets' movement through them um, so that no matter what kind of calendar system we had, we could see when their exact date was that they told us. When I say they, I'm talking about the Elohim. And um, which is God in the Hebrew Bible, and um, and uh, the reason it's important is because we were told that when we see this sign in the heavens, that it means that all these other things are going to happen. The one world government will rise. Everyone will be microchipped. Um, a great war will happen. Um, there's going to be meteors. All this stuff that the whole book of Revelation talks about. That's why it's so important. But um, I, what I just want to do before I go through the research, the um, the possible fulfillments and show you the pictures is just go quickly go over the requirements for the fulfillment of this because there's just so much disinformation. Um, the first requirement is that the sun has to be in Virgo. The reason is it says a woman clothed with the sun. There's the sun goes through 12 constellations per year. They're called the, the, the ecliptic constellations. Um, God, the Elohim, made the constellations for us to be used for signs. Job 9, 9, Genesis 1. As the sun figuratively seems to move through these 12 constellations, there's only one of those 12 that is a woman. And so that is Virgo. So when it says a woman clothed with the sun, it has to be, the sun has to be in Virgo. It also says upon her head a crown of 12 stars. That's Virgo. Um, so the astronomers um, say that, uh, that the constellation Virgo has 12 stars with known planets. And this astronomer says that there are exactly 12 stars in the head of Virgo. So um, the first requirement is that the sun has to be in Virgo. The second requirement is that the moon has to be under her feet. So I made this little um, outline here. The sun must be in Virgo, that's the first requirement. The moon must be at Virgo's feet and preferably in alignment with her feet since there's two stars that represent her feet. Um, the third requirement is that um, she being with child travailed in birth, so she has to be giving birth. In other words, um, so let me actually just go to 2012 here, and I'll get to these. You can see 2012 is a perfect, perfect fulfillment of Revelation 12. You can see the moon is in perfect alignment with the two stars representing her feet. These are her legs. This is her body, and these are her arms. This line right here represents her birth canal. So there has to be, the third requirement is that there has to be a planetary body right here at her birth canal to represent her giving birth. So that's the third requirement from the scripture. A planet or the sun must be on the line representing Virgo's birth canal. Um, the next part it talks about the dragon having seven heads and ten horns. This is the beast of Revelation and Daniel which represents the one world government. So there's three things that the dragon represents in Revelation 12. That's the the one world government, the draconit, the constellation Draco, and the planet Saturn. The most 
the, the constellation Draco has a meteor shower, and that's why it says when he cast the stars to the earth, it's talking about the meteor shower that happened here. We have a fulfillment right here um, of Revelation 12 next week, and the Draconid meteor fa shower was before that on the calendar. So it says um, the dragon stood before the woman to devour her child as soon as it was born. Now we know that that is the planet Saturn, and this is the most important part of it, because in order to find the date of it, we need to find which planet is supposed to be waiting to devour, because the, the constellation Draco never moves. We need, and it doesn't have a myth of, a, of devouring a child before it's born. Saturn does have that myth. Um, the Roman god Saturn is associated with the Greek god Cronus, who... Um, devoured his children as soon as they were born. So the fourth criteria for this to be fulfilled is that Saturn has to be waiting for the child to devour, to devour the child. Saturn has to be right in here somewhere um, in order to to devour this child it and it has to be Saturn because there's no other planetary object that has the story of devouring its own children as soon as they're born so Saturn has to be here in my searches I looked for Saturn anywhere between this line right here all the way down to this line because this line down here is um, it's the constellation of Libra so you can see in this picture this is Libra so I searched if Saturn was between this point and this point, I have it in my list, okay, just so you know. But that is the um, fourth requirement. Saturn must be there. Um, the fifth requirement is that the birthing planet or sun must represent Jesus. The reason we know that is because it says that she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. Revelation 19 says he shall rule them with a rod of iron and his name is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. That's Jesus. So what planetary object represents Jesus? Well, we know that Jesus is the morning star from Revelation 22. I, Jesus, am the bright and morning star. So the morning star can either be the sun or Venus. Well, it narrows it down even more in Psalm 19 when it says that God created the constellations and in them he set a tabernacle for the sun which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber so the sun is the bridegroom and we know that the bridegroom is Jesus so the requirement here that the birthing planet or sun must represent Jesus we know that it needs to be the sun because the sun is the bridegroom Psalm 19 but when I did my search I looked for any planet, any planet at all that would land right here exactly when the moon was at Virgo's feet. Any planet. If the sun was in Virgo and the moon was at her feet, any planet at all, if it landed here, I put it in my list. But the really interesting thing was that when I did that search, the majority of the planets I found was just the sun or Venus. I only, I never found, Jupiter was never there, um, um, Neptune was never there, um, well Saturn, Saturn has to be waiting to devour, um, Mercury was only there a few times, and the times that Mercury was there, um, you know, like it was, like Saturn was right on the line with it, or, um, or like this one, Saturn was way down here and Mercury's not even the morning star. But I went ahead and entered that anyway. Even though it's not, we know that Mercury's not the morning star. And Mars was only on there one time. And when Mars was on there, um, Saturn was way down here at the feet. Mars was right here. But we all, again, we know that Mars isn't the morning star. But still, I thought it was interesting that you know none of the other planets showed up it was mostly just Venus and the Sun so let me just go back here and say okay now that we know that we have those requirements have to be there 
the last requirement is that it has to occur within the possible time frame of the seventh of the starting of the seven thousandth year. So remember, the Bible is written in code, and it tells us that the seven thousandth year is holy. It tells us that humans will be a, without the Elohim for a hundred and twenty years, which is a hundred and twenty jubilees is six thousand years, which is the same as this. It also tells us Israel, which is symbolic again for the chosen on the earth, will join the Lord in the year of restitution when Moses is 120 years old. Again, that's after 6,000 years. So the end of 6,000 years, and I made this, this graphic to show, we started right around here, around 4,000 BC, and the end of 6,000 years would be right around 2,000 AD. Nobody knows the exact year okay but religious scholars and archaeologists agree that the beginning of our civilization was sometime between 4500 and 3600 so I can just show you um, right here we have the chronology of the Bible Wikipedia this rabbi scholar says that this was the when Adam and um, lived and and I'm sure that that's based upon biblical chronology bi biblical records we know that the Bronze Age was dated at starting 3600 BC and we know that Sumer the first civil the first city of our civilization in the cradle of civilization in Iraq was right around here in 4500 to 4000 so I'm just showing you that this isn't just a religious thing this is based on you know several different sources that are saying this is the time frame so if we add 6,000 years to that we end up with a time frame of the start of the 7,000th year would have to according to this according to these scholars all these different people the start of the 7,000th year would have to be somewhere between 1500 AD and 2400 AD so when I um, and you can read all this other stuff you know the Elohim left date markers and all these scriptures you can you can go ahead and research that yourself I'm running out of time so I have to move on so I'm gonna go ahead and show you these um, but you could see I went ahead and started in 70 AD because that was when Revelation was written and I ended in 3000 AD even though our time frame is only from 1500 to 2400 so, but I did all of these and I only found three matches. Um, and let me just go ahead and show, with 2012 being the most exact out of these three. But let me just go ahead and show you these and I'll start here. And, you, and I'm going to move through kind of quickly so you can pause on these to really examine them if you want to. Um, but here's the first one you can see the sun's not really at the birth canal anyway um, but I'll just go ahead and move through these because we know that this is not within our time frame although many of these are not exact alignments anyway I didn't just add exact configurations I added everything that could even be close okay so anything even if it was just close I added it like this is the first one in our time frame so you can see that the Sun is not really at the birth canal here's Saturn here's the moon it's not really at the birth canal but maybe and that's you know that's what I said I said maybe um, although it's not really this one though in 1570 is more exact in fact this is almost exactly like the 2012 alignment the Sun is right on the birth canal line the Saturn's right here the moon is right here the only problem is that date is already passed so we just happen to know that that wasn't it you know what I mean just simply for the fact that it's already passed this is not really a fulfillment I just thought it was interesting that it was close to a fulfillment because it's 1776 but it's not really because it's not really on the line and we're past that date anyway but I just thought it was interesting this is not really a fulfillment because it's Mercury here. I got to move on. I'm about to run out of time. I just thought this was interesting because Mercury was perfectly eclipsing Spica. This is a perfect alignment and it happens next week. It's perfect. 
Okay, moving on. 2072, not really because it's Venus. Saturn is way down here, not really waiting to devour, not really a fulfillment. 2100, no, because it's Mercury. I'm running out of time. i got to go. But these are the rest of the alignments. You can see that it is clearly 2012 that is the, the perfect alignment. Okay, hope you guys are having a great day. Bye.